Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my beginner tutorial on getting started with Affinity Publisher V2. In this video, I wanna show you how you can set up your canvas to the correct size for your projects and talk about all of these other individual settings and what they are used for. So this tutorial has been created for complete beginners that may be opening up Affinity Publisher for the first time. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So today's video is going to be all about setting up our canvas. And when you first open up Affinity Publisher for the first time, you're going to be presented with this dialog box in front of us. And what we can do inside of here is choose one of these ready-made templates over on the left-hand side. You can see that when we make our way through all of these different templates, they're going to change in real time. So we can get a visual look of how our design is going to look once we go ahead and set up our canvas. And there are many different types of presets in here that you can use for all different types of projects, such as if you're designing for an iPad mini, for instance, you have that option right there. That is going to be the perfect size to design for that iPad mini or the iPad 10.5, as well as the iPhone X or XS. And of course, if any of you guys like to design for social media, then we have a few different options inside of here as well. So in most cases, when you open up Affinity Publisher, you are going to want to use one of the ready-made presets as these are going to be all the common sizes that are used in today's projects that you may want to go ahead and create. However, if you find that you do want to make something a little more custom and specific to what you are going for, then what we need to do is just manually create our own. And the way that you would do that is just down here inside of our page width and our page height. All we got to do is simply drag across this or double tap in any of these and we can go ahead and just change these numbers to anything that you would like. I'll go and put 3000 by 3000, hit enter on my keyboard, then you will see in real time that this will update our preview and now we can see what we're going to get. And another thing that you may want to do is go and change your document units. As default for me, this is in pixels, but some people like to work in points or inches or millimeters, and this is completely up to you and how you would like to work. Then next we have our DPI settings, and this is gonna vary on the type of project that you are creating. If you wanna go ahead and print your document once you've completed that, then you wanna set your DPI to 300, and always leave it at 300 if you want to print. However, if you are just designing for web or device, i.e. maybe a mobile phone, iPad, or computer, then you can leave your DPI as 144 or anything that you would like. This really does not matter if you are designing for web or device it becomes more important when you want to print so remember if you do want to print set that at 300 if you want to design for web or device and you can have that as anything you like it really does not matter it is recommended that you do try and keep that low as it's going to take up more space on your computer if you don't as it's going to increase the quality of the images and the content the higher that you set this so next we have this image placement option with a couple of different options inside of this drop down menu. First of all, we have prefer linked and then we have prefer embedded. And what this means is that if any of you guys want to import any images into Affinity Publisher, if you use that prefer linked, then that is going to direct to the original location on your hard drive of where you save that image. This is definitely recommended if you find that you want to save space on your computer and you don't plan on deleting the images from the original location. However, if you find that you do delete that image off your original location or off your hard drive at any point in the future, what's going to happen is when you open up your project, it's not going to be able to find the image that it originally linked to because you may have moved or deleted that. So that is where prefer linked becomes an issue. However, if you find that you may delete an image by accident or move it later on down the line from your hard drive, then you want to go ahead and choose that prefer embedded. What that will do is actually make a copy of that image and it will place it inside of the document that you've created. So then you will always have access to that image once you open up your project. However, that prefer embedded option is going to make your project a little bit larger in size when you go ahead and save that to your computer. And of course, it's up to you to choose whichever one of these you would like to work with. So what we're going to do next is we're going to ignore this actual size zoom as I don't really feel it's relevant and something you're not going to pay attention to. So underneath that, we've got the default master option and we're going to talk about masters in another tutorial. So we'll go ahead and just ignore that for now. So what we're going to do next Next is head up to this pages tab 
Then inside of here, we have a couple of different options. The first one being this facing pages. Once we go ahead and we turn that on, what that is going to do is create a spread. So we have a left and the right hand side page, and this is gonna be handy for anyone creating books or magazines. However, if you are going to work on just a single page, maybe you're creating a flyer or something like that, then you want to go ahead and turn that facing pages off. And of course, if you do have that turned on, you have a couple of different options just here inside the range. You can go ahead and change that to vertical or back to horizontal. That is entirely up to you. And you can start on either the left or the right hand side. However, if you are creating yourself a book or magazine, it's always best to start on the right hand side. Then underneath that, we have the number of pages that you're going to want for your document or your project. So that right there is dependent on what you are going for. So next to this, we have our color option. Then inside of here, we have our color format and our color profile. The color profile, you can generally just leave the way it is. Don't worry too much about that. However, there's going to be a couple of different options inside of our color format that you're going to want to pay attention to. The first one being this RGB8. So if you guys are designing for web or device, then you want to be working inside of this RGB8. And if you find that you want to print your documents, then you want to change that to be working inside the CMYK. So you can see that once we choose this CMYK option over to the right hand side, you can see that we have these four different colors. Whereas if we go and change this back to RGB, then we have these three different colors. So without getting too technical about the RGB and CMYK options, all I really recommend is that if you guys decide that you are designing for web or device, then you want to be using RGB8. However, if you are going to print your documents that you are designing, then then go ahead and make sure that you are working in CMYK. Then at the bottom of this, we have this option right here, which says transparent background. And all this is going to do is remove this white background that we have right here on our project. So if I just go ahead and turn that off, you can see that we now have a transparent background or it's disappeared. In most cases, you're going to find that quite difficult to work with unless you are creating graphics. So most of the time you want to go ahead and just leave that turned on. So moving on, we have our margins tab. Then inside of here is where you're gonna set up all your margins around your document to make sure that your content doesn't get too close to the edges of the paper. And you can do that just by double tapping inside of any of these and changing these numbers to anything that you would like. Alternatively, you can turn off the include margins if you don't wanna use those. So next we have the bleed option, and this is gonna be really important if any of you guys are printing your documents and you want to print from edge to edge. So for instance, if you have a background image that you wanna go all the way from one edge of your document to the other, and you don't want to border around that image, then you need to account for your bleed. And the bleed settings you want to use for this is going to be three millimeter all the way around. As three millimeter is the industry standard when it comes to creating a bleed, if you're going to outsource to a printer to have this cut and printed for you. At the moment, this is at three pixels, so that is wrong. What we actually need to do is just change that to millimeter. So if I just type MM on my keyboard, hit enter, then that will update to the rest of these. And three millimeter is going to be 17 pixels. And depending on the units that you are working in, it's going to update that, whether that's going to be in inches or centimeters, etc. However, you can just simply type in three millimeter, hit enter, then that will automatically convert for you in your current units. So if you find that you've now created a custom size canvas that you may want to use again in the future, then it's a good idea to save it as a preset. And the way that we would do that is just by selecting this button that we have right here, which says save preset as. Once you go ahead and you select that, give your preset a name, then inside of the category, go and change that to my presets, hit OK. Then once you go ahead and make your way all the way down to the bottom, you will find that your preset that you just created down here inside of your preset section. Or alternatively, if we choose any one of these presets that we have here and we make any changes to this whatsoever, maybe just putting any numbers in there for the moment, you'll find straight away that we have the option to override the original settings right here just by saving overwrite the current preset. I don't recommend doing that, but the option is there if you want to. So moving on, what we can also do if we choose ourselves a template is we can decide the orientation, whether we want it to be landscape or portrait. And the way that we would do that is by these buttons just up here. So at the moment it is in landscape, but we can simply change that to portrait by selecting the other option. 
And this drop down menu right here is just a quick way of finding what you are looking for inside of your templates rather than scrolling down. You can just simply navigate straight to the print section. So what I want to quickly point out as well is we have this print option right here and this press ready. Essentially, these are both exactly the same thing. They have all of the same sizes inside of here. The only difference between both of these is the press ready has automatically got our DPI as 300 and our color is CMYK. So the press ready is going to be used for a print, whereas the print option at the top here, that is now going to set that as RGB. So we are working in web or device. And the DPI is the same, but you can go ahead and change that if you want to. So moving on, what else we have here is we have the option to create the new document. And this is where we're going to end up as soon as we open up Affinity Publisher. Then underneath that, we have the option to open up any previous documents that we may have created. Then underneath that, we also have the option to open up any recent projects that we may have worked on. This is going to be empty for you guys if you are brand new to Affinity Publisher, although it will start to populate over time when you start saving some projects. So underneath that, we have an option to go and find some templates that we may have imported and downloaded from the Internet. So finally, we have this sample section where we have a few different documents which have been created by the Affinity team. And these are really just used as a way of showing you how all of this comes together. Of course, you can go in here and edit any of this and change the content to be your own. But I don't recommend you do this as you're better off creating something from scratch. But if you guys want to have a little play around with these and seeing how it all comes together, then feel free to do so. So with all of that out of the way, that is pretty much the end of this tutorial on getting started with creating our canvas and setting up our color format and our DPI. And one more thing I'll mention is this option right here, which says show on startup. With this checked, then every time you open up Affinity Publisher, this dialog box will show up which is going to make it a lot easier every time you want to start a project. However, if you don't want that to show up, go ahead and turn that off. Then you'll find that when you open up Affinity Publisher, it will look like this. And the way that you'll get back to starting a project is going up to the file menu and select new, and then that will bring it back up for you. However, it's easier just to leave that turned on to begin with, then you won't have to do that step. Then finally, all we have to do is hit this create button right here to get started with our project. So that is it for this video in setting up our canvas inside of Affinity Publisher V2. And I will see you in the next video.